Off the Cuff is supported by Patreon. Subscribe today and get exclusive member content, in-episode credit, and fun Off the Cuff merchandise. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Off the Cuff Healthy Cooking with, with, uh, oh yeah, me, <laughs> Greg Mitchell. Today's show is going to be a lot of fun. Now, as you know, normally I'm here and I take comfort foods and I make them lower carb and equally as delicious. And usually it's entrees, sweet treats, desserts, but today I'm looking at a different arena. Today I'm looking at the arena of salty snacks. Now, if you're like me, you suffer from snack attacks, and boy, they can be insidious. They can happen at any time, after breakfast, after lunch, before dinner, late at night. All I know is when it happens, you want to satisfy it. And generally, you need something salty, crunchy, and delicious. Now, usually you would go to potato chips, popcorn, or pretzels, but uh, they're high in carb, and they don't mesh well with my type 2 diabetes. Now, I do know and I acknowledge there are very good alternatives on the market, but you know what I found? The best ones, you have to have shipped to yourself. Yeah, if I'm having a snack attack, I want it settled right now. So don't worry, I've got you covered. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make not one, but two salty snacks. The first one is a favorite, homemade, low carb, salty, delicious, pretzel rods. Secondly, if you like it on the cheesy side, yeah, homemade cheddar -y cheese it crackers right in your own kitchen. Oh yeah, it's going to be yum yum. You never know when a snack attack is gonna hit. You can be driving, home watching TV, watching a movie, you, you, uh, uh, you, uh, um, excuse me, sir, uh, can I help you? Oh, I'm just waiting. Okay. You could be home watching TV, watch, um, excuse me again, sir, uh, but what are you waiting for? Well, for the tour. Oh. Tour? Sir, this is my kitchen. What tour? The official off-the-cuff kitchen tour. I'm sorry. There's no... Oh, it's my phone. Hold on a second. Ah, it's my producer, Jeff. Hey, Jeff, I'm glad you called. I'm filming, and there's a guy here. Yeah, I forgot to tell you. Forgot to tell me what? We're doing tours now. We're, what the what? The show is getting popular, so we're giving kitchen tours now. Kitchen tours? Dude, there's barely enough room in here for me and my cat. I took a deep breath in here last week and got wedged in for three days. It's in our contract. You gotta do it. I don't know how to give a tour. You'll figure it out. Oh, boy. Okay, so how many more people are coming? Just Tim. Just this guy? I said we were getting popular. I didn't say we were popular. <sighs> Do your best. Bye. Yeah, bye. So, um, welcome to the, um, welcome to the official off-the-cuff kitchen tour. I'm Craig Mitchell. Hey! Uh, thanks. This is my stove. Oh. Uh, it was here when I moved in. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, uh, oh, um... It's probably from the 60s or late 60s, so technically it's an antique. And we have a question. Which one is your favorite burner? My favorite burner. You, you know, actually, that's a good question. I just realized that 90% of the time when I use this, I use this burner. I knew it! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good, okay. Uh, so let's continue. And we're walking, and we're walking, and we're moving, we're walking, and stop. And this is my coffee pot. And we have another question. What does it do? It makes coffee. Would you, would you like a cup? Oh no, the brochure says there are no beverages allowed. Okay then. And we're walking, we're walking. You know what, it's just the two of us. You don't have to raise your hand. What's this? Well, that's my sink. What does it do? Really? 
This is my sink. Uh, it provides water to the kitchen for cooking and for doing dishes and such. Nice. Right. And you want to see how it works, don't you? Okay. If you turn this spigot, you get cold water. Oh. If you turn this spigot, you get hot water. Wow. What happens if you turn both of them on? You get a really high water bill. I'm kidding. You get warm water. Well, wait, well, wait. There they are. Yep, here they are. Wow, these are your air fryers. You can fry anything on these things, right? Yeah, that's why they call them air fryers. Well, this is why I came here. Oh, uh, good. Hey, can you take a picture? Sure, go ahead. Well, I was hoping you could take one with me. Oh, you mean just with... Would you mind? Um, no. That, that's okay. All right, cool. Uh, okay, say cheese. Grilled cheese. Get my best side. Sure. Here are the ingredients. All righty then, it's salty snack time. First up, the low carb pretzel rods. One half cup grated mozzarella, three tablespoon almond flour, one tablespoon ghee, one large egg, one half teaspoon sea salt, and one quarter teaspoon garlic powder. Now for those keto cheese crackers. Three quarters of a cup of shredded cheddar cheese, one half cup almond flour, one large egg, one quarter teaspoon sea salt, and one tablespoon nutritional yeast. All right, we have all the ingredients we need to make our pretzel rods. And we're gonna start with the mozzarella and the ghee. Our half cup of mozzarella and the tablespoon of ghee. The ghee is already melted, but we put it in with the mozzarella. We're going to microwave this at 30 second intervals until it's melted. And the first 30 seconds is away. 30 seconds achieved. Now let's stir this in. All right. I'm gonna do about 20 seconds more. All right, this is now well melted. Take your almond flour, your sea salt, and your garlic powder, and mix. Mix till it's thoroughly integrated it's mixing quite well you can see how it's mixing how it is mixing together okay now we take our one large lightly beaten egg and we put it in there and we mix it even more okay it's not totally mixing but the recipe said if it doesn't mix Put it in the microwave for 10 second intervals and, until it does. All right, back to the microwave for 10 seconds. Time cook, 10, okay. It's a little bit better. I wouldn't say it's becoming a flour quite yet. I'm gonna try it for 10 more seconds. It's actually working. It's actually becoming more like a dough, as you can see. Okay, yeah. Well, hush my mouth. It's working. Honesty time. I wasn't liking how this was coming into a dough. So even though the recipe called for three tablespoons of almond flour, I added an extra one, and it's given it more body. So feel free to play around with the recipe yourself. Now let's make those pretzel rods. So we take some parchment paper, and we take our dough, and we put it on the parchment paper to get all of it. And what we're going to attempt to do is roll this, roll this into a, a string. And it's working. Okay. I wasn't sure if this part was going to work, but it seems to be working. Just got to be careful with this. It's sticky. There we go. Roll up, roll down. Let's see if this works. That did it. 
That did it. There we go. And we're going to keep on rolling this and shaping it with our hands. This recipe says we're supposed to get six pretzel rods from this. You know what? We can, but there's a way we there's a way I can ensure that we can cut this in half. Roll this down. Because we're gonna need the space. So there we go. There we go. We're in business now. Shape it, squeeze it. Yeah, remember when you played with Play-Doh? Well, you get to do it again. So here we have, I would say that's one, and that's two, and that's one, and that's two. There we have what will be our pretzel rods. And I'm separating them and shaping them. Now let these sit for a second and preheat your, hus uh, your husband. Yes, preheat your husband. <laughs> preheat your oven to 400. All right. Here was something else that wasn't in the recipe. If you let this dough cool, it's easier to manipulate. I should have known that. This is coming along quite nice now. Oh yeah, much easier. Not falling apart is easy and I can make it longer. This is going to be nice. Now I have some melted, some melted ghee. By the way, if you didn't know, ghee is basically just clarified butter that you buy. That's it. Clarified, unsalted butter. Yeah. So now what I'm going to do is take some of this ghee and I'm going to coat up oh, the oven's ready. I'm gonna coat each pretzel rod. Then we're gonna take some of this coarse salt. And this is of course, I, this is actually pretzel salt. It's the real deal. And we're gonna coat our pretzel sticks. Because now we're gonna transfer this sheet to a cooking pan. And you Here we are. All right, as already established, 400 degree preheated oven, pretzel rods for 15 minutes. Middle rack is fine. There we go. We'll see you in 15. Okay, the pretzels, oh baby, they're ready. But you're not gonna see them now. You'll see them at the calories and carbs later on because right now, it's time for Food Facts. The fabled history of pretzels dates all the way back to 610 AD, when a monk, but, no, that's, that's Tony Shalhoub as Adrian Monk. I mean, an Italian monk. Much better. An Italian monk created pretzels as a reward and incentive for children to learn their Bible verses. The twist in the pretzel is supposed to represent the kids praying. Yeah, and you know, I, I kind of knew that. You know what I didn't know? The three holes in a pretzel represents the Holy Trinity. I didn't know that. Mind blown. <laughs> By the 13th century, pretzels were really catching on. This is an illustration of Queen Esther and King Ahasuerus showing the first illustration of a pretzel. I'll circle it, see? Yeah, look at that, a pretzel, all the way back then. I love this picture. But I wonder, I wonder what the king is saying to the queen in this picture. He's probably going, oh look queen, the royal dessert cart is cometh. In the 1600s, the Swiss used pretzels in wedding ceremonies to represent the matrimonial bond. You know, the, the, the as a matter of fact, to this day, we still use a term based on that, tying the knot. Yeah. I wonder why they don't use pretzels in modern wedding ceremonies. May we have the ring, please? Yeah, I totally should have went to Jared. Rumor has it that the pilgrims actually had pretzels on the Mayflower when they came to the New World. 
Yeah, if that's true, it's very possible that pretzels were on the table at the very first Thanksgiving. How very cool. Also, the pilgrims were carrying beer on the Mayflower. Do you know what that means? The pilgrims had the greatest combination of all time, beer and pretzels, and somehow I don't think they connected it. How could that be? Ah, uh, we are so lucky to be here on the Mayflower with this truly delicious brew. I wish I had something crunchy and salty to pair with this brew. I've looked everywhere but can't find it. In the new world, I shall learn to read and to turn my head slightly to the right. Of course, the one people who are most associated with pretzels are the Germans. And when the Germans immigrated to the United States in the 1800s, they brought pretzels with them. As a matter of fact, in 1861 in Lidditz, Pennsylvania, the very first pretzel bakery opened. It was opened by a man named Julius Sturgis. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Mr. Sturgis is also credited for inventing the first hard pretzel. Prior to that, all pretzels were soft. Believe it or not, by the year 1930, most pretzels were still being hand twisted. Yeah. Now, the most gifted pretzel twisters, try saying that five times fast, could only twist about 40 pretzels a minute, which is good, but man, that's a breakneck pace. In 1935, the Reading Pretzel Machinery Company invented the first automated pretzel twister, and now they can produce 245 pretzels a minute, and the boom was on. Okay, now it's time for pretzel trivia. In Germany, they call pretzels pretzels. Hmm. The average pretzel, and I'm assuming a soft pretzel here, has 3.5 grams of fat and 260 calories. Now, if you have a pretzel with no salt, that's called a baldy. Oh, come on. Be nice. <laughs> there you go. Holly Huff is the world record holder at hand twisting pretzels. She can twist an amazing 57 pretzels a minute. <laughs> 57 a minute. That's like three less than I can eat. Pennsylvania is still the United States' premier producer of pretzels. The Keystone State is responsible for 80% of the pretzels we consume. And let's close with some tidbits on the Cheez-It. The Cheez-It just celebrated its 100th birthday. It was created May 23rd, 1921. It was created by Green and Green Baking Company in Dayton, Ohio, It was uh, who was owned by J.W. Green. Now, their original name was the Baked Rare Bit. Yeah, that doesn't sound very commercial. And what was most attractive about it is Cheez-Its as they're called now, had an 11 month shelf life. That's in the age before real good refrigeration or vacuum pack. The true origin of the cheese, it harkens back to 1841, when a doctor by the name of William Wolfe, he was a homeopathic doctor who believed in the power of food to heal, created something called the Wolf Cracker. It was meant to repair and also to ensure good digestion. But it got so popular, people ate it recreationally, including a young man by the name of J. W. Green, who in 1921 invented Cheez-Its. Salty snacks. They've been with us a long time, and they're going to be with us for a long time to come. And that's Food Facts. Behold the ingredients for the cheese crackers. Yes, we are going to grate some sharp cheddar cheese. I like sharp. You can make it mild. I want this to have a kick. Then we need three quarters of a cup. And we start grating. Yeah. Yeah, isn't this great? Okay, that's one pun. Oh boy. Let's see how much I have. This is a quarter cup, so that's one. I think I have it. That's two. Yep, I got it. That's three. Here is our three quarters of a cup of uh, sharp cheddar cheese. Guess what? Back to the microwave. Actually, before we get to the microwave, we're going to do this. Our almond flour, our nutritional yeast, and the sea salt. And we mix it well together. Now, once that's done, in goes our egg, and we mix this together. It's going to be crumbly, and that's okay. But you wanna make sure it's mixed as much as possible. Okay, crumbly. 
It's all in there. Now to the microwave. The recipe didn't specify how long to put it in the microwave, so I figure 30 second increments and check and stir and that stuff. It seems to be standard fare. Okay, 30 seconds. I have to say, I have not used a microwave this much in a long time. 30 seconds. I think because I'm being cautious, I'm due for like 10, 15 more seconds. 15 sounds good, right? 15? Yeah, 15. Here is our melted cheese. Okay, it's mixing into a into a wonderful bowl of cheesiness. And we want the cheese and the almond flour and the egg, the nutrition the nutritional yeast to become one. Still incorporating it, folding it into each other. There we are. Let's take a look again. It's getting better. All right, this is now done. Yes. Now, let's get some parchment paper. Parchment paper. Down. Dough. Down. Okay, here is another sheet. I'm going to spray this. Place it over our dough. I use, compared to most doughs, this is actually very easy to spread. Now we're going to be, of course, cutting these. You can cut them any way you want, but to give it that cheese it or that cheese cracker look, you're going to want to cut it into squares. All right. Very nice. So, okay, that, that could go a little bit more here. And we are done. Now I'm going to take this side off here. And I'm going to take this side off here. Don't lose these because you, I'm going to make more Cheez-Its out of this, just not on this round. Now we're going to make them into Cheez-Its. There's a row. There's a row. There's a row. Another row. Another row. And this will be a tiny row. This is going to be a little... We're gonna have some small, some small cheese. It's because I mistimed my row. I miss. Well, it's okay. Now what we do is we take a fork and we put holes in them. The reason why I do that is because they tend to bubble. Also, it makes it look like other the the real cheese. It's too, but this stops them from bubbling up. Take some more of that pretzel salt and put it on it. Not as much, but you do. Here is the baking pan. Okay, now into the oven. Hey, nice to see you at the oven again. Okay, so I didn't have to preheat it to 350 degrees. I never turned the oven off. I just rolled it down to 350, so it's ready. And we put this in for eight to 12 minutes till they get golden brown. Again, middle rack is fine. And Cheese crackers away. Oh boy, I cannot wait. Okay, it's been 11 minutes. The cheese crackers are done. Here we go. And just like that, it's snack time. Low carb, homemade pretzel rods, and homemade low-carb cheese crackers. Man, you know what? I was a little nervous about this recipe. Actually, both, because I had never done them before. Now I'm going to try the pretzel. Okay. Here we go, the pretzel rod. Mm. Crunchy, salty. It really does taste like a pretzel. Crunchy. That is good. Now for the cheese crackers. Huh. Oh man, crunch, cheese. You know the flavor when you eat one of these crackers, the real ones, and the cheese goes all through your mouth? Oh. These are great. These taste exactly like the real thing, wow. 
Well, that's it for... Oh. oh. Hey, it's my producer. Hey, Jeff, what's going on? Hey, did that, uh, did that, did that gentleman uh, like the tour? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, I'll make sure. Okay, thanks. Bye. <sighs> he wants a refund. Anyway, thank you for watching. See you next time. Be well. Eat good. On the next Off the Cuff, I reimagine a classic. This is a low carb cheeseburger pocket. Plus, I'm on a wacky game show. Craig Michelle. That's uh, Craig Mitchell, Johnny. Yeah, yeah, sure you are. A lesson in food safety. I was feeling pretty good until I ate this lunch. It's cheeseburger time. This is absolutely terrific. Join me for Off the Cuff Healthy Cooking with Craig Mitchell. Alternate Sundays at 7.30 p.m. right here on Strong.